every clear night has new things to offer. In winter you can go after Orion and Taurus, and in spring you can go after an endless amount of galaxies. My name is Tim Richter, astrophotographer from Germany. Join me tonight as I photograph two of these galaxies from my own backyard. Spring is almost here, and astrophotographers around the world are preparing their big telescopes. Because the possible targets in this season are tiny. At first we have the constellation Big Dipper. In there you can find multiple Messier objects worth mentioning. Looking at the handle we can find the Pinwheel Galaxy and the Whirlpool Galaxy. The Pinwheel Galaxy is great at a focal length of 450 to 750 millimeters but the Whirlpool Galaxy is a much tougher target, because it is just that tiny. As a reference, these images have been shot with my 714mm refractor. Looking more to the south, the constellation Leo is rising. It is known for its famous Leo triplet. Three galaxies close to the paw of the lion. And one of them is called the Hamburger Galaxy. I'm getting hungry. But even better, moving down just a tiny bit from the lion, we can find the constellation Virgo. And it's almost impossible to wrap your head around it. But in the constellation Virgo, you can find the famous Virgo supercluster of galaxies. Every ellipse you see here is a galaxy. There are thousands, if not millions, of galaxies. A very popular target over there is Macarian's chain. I don't think that you can photograph more galaxies in a single image. In the Big Dipper you can also find our targets for these nights, the galaxy pair M81 and 2. They sit roughly between Dubai, the brightest star in the Big Dipper and Ursa Major, and Polaris. The bigger one, Boat's Galaxy, was discovered in 1774 by German astronomer Johann Bode. Excuse me, Johann Bode. And later classified by Charles Messier, hence the name Messier 81. It's a spiral galaxy with quite a few star-forming regions, glowing in a hot red. And with an apparent magnitude of 6.9, it's a popular target for amateur astronomers. Its partner is commonly called the Cigar Galaxy, Messier 81. It was also discovered by Johann Boat because it's kinda hard to miss if you already look at the first galaxy he found there. The special thing about this galaxy, it is a so-called starburst galaxy, meaning that it's forming and literally burning stars at an incredible rate. But its most striking feature are hydrogen filaments ejected perpendicular to the disk. Speaking about all this hydrogen in the galaxies, it's no surprise that a composite image, HARGB, will look amazing on these galaxies. My plan is to shoot the RGB data with my Color ASI camera, in combination with the Optolong Air Pro filter, a light pollution filter that preserves the natural star color. Getting my hand on narrowband data is a bit trickier, but I can kind of cheat the system. In an ideal world you would use a monochrome camera and an HA filter. I have neither of these things, but I have a camera and a multi-narrowband filter, the Optolong L-Extreme. This filter passes HA and O3 and I can extract the HA layer in post-processing. And now all I need are some clear skies.
Some of you may remember the big telescope, the Omegon refractor. I need the big focal length to get the small galaxies in the frame. And apart from that, not much has changed. I still have my ASI color camera, the guide scope, but this time with the mono guide cam from ZWO and the filter wheel. The only big new thing is the ASI Air, which is still upstairs, I don't have it down here, with which I can control the entire thing. And I will do that as soon as it's night time. Here we have the beautiful telescope, the ASI Air already started up. And maybe if I position the camera a bit differently, you can see some stars of the Big Dipper over there. Look at that. Awesome. Main camera, the ASI-294, got camera 120 mini. I have the filter wheel connected. It should be focused. Let's see. I will take a quick preview. Well, that's not exactly in focus, but it's almost enough. If you have a Wi-Fi connection to your camera and you do things like focusing or framing, go for a binning of 4. The images will be much faster. I will stop this live view and go for PA, Polar Alignment. The mount is already set up in home position. I will take a quick exposure with the main camera through the main scope. And it's gonna play it off that one. And the scope rotates. Now, I suppose this is the same method as, as PhD Drift Alignment and the Pole Master use. Comparing before and after of a slew, how much the X is rotated. And I can press let's go. You can see I'm that's pretty good actually for the start. I will need to place the tablet. I will need to move down, a tiny bit down, and to the right. Yes, to the right. Eleven arc seconds. I'm gonna press finish. And that's the polar alignment, easy as that. The orientation of the camera is correct, I will not need to confirm that. Which is why I can now go to my focusing star, which in this case will be Dubai in the Big Dipper, the biggest star in the region. Maybe... Can we see Dubai up there? Yes. There it is, with the entirety of the Big Dipper. I'm gonna go in the upper right here, go for the named stars. A, B, C. Over there. And press go to. And I'm gonna focus really. Apparently, there it is, the star is centered. Gonna put on the Batnov mask, which has always trouble getting on there. Sadly, Batnov masking is not included in any type of software in the ASI Air. I can just go to focus with the bin of four, maybe, and make this image of the star bigger as these exposures are looping. Moving out a tiny bit and locking focus. This should do the trick. Perfect. Focusing done. Look at this in the background, here they are. <laughs> this is so amazing. I, re I remembered the orientation. This star over here in the middle will be in the center of the image in the small circle in which Boats is right now. And I can start shooting. And I just remembered that I need to set the other filter and focus again. Let me do that real quick and I'll be back as soon as the target is going because I'm running out of time. <laughs> 